Hi, I'm Michael, tie expert, and I'm going to be teaching you several different ways to tie a tie. And while you're watching these videos, there are a couple of things you need to keep in mind. First of all, you need to memorize the direction of the tie. If it's inside out like this, the wide end is going to start under the narrow end. If it's one of the more common knots, it's going to start right side up, and the wide end will be over the narrow end. As you can see, both times, the wide end started on my right side. The wide end should always start on the right side. When I'm tying a tie, there are three directions I'll go in. Left, right, and over. Whenever I say a different direction, you should memorize it. In addition, I can go over or under. When I'm tying a tie and I put my finger under the loop like this, that means that I'm soon going to thread the wide end through it and I'll be finished. When you see me put my two fingers inside the loop, you should do that as well. When you're tying a knot, there are three additional factors that determine the size of the knot in addition to the knot used. The tautness at which one ties the knot, the width or kind of material of the tie, and, if you're using more than one move over the top, the location of the loop. For instance, tying it over the top at this point would result in a wider tie than tying it off at this point. Many men go through life knowing only one knot, which is a pity, because wider knots are more formal and better suited for wider collars and for wider necks. Narrower, more asymmetrical knots are better suited for smaller necks, narrower button-down collars, informal wear, and skinny ties. Now let's move on to the knots.